played through high school and I was always playing piano on the side for my own amazement and uh, got some old rock and roll bands together back in high school days and for my own bands in college I went to Emory University in Atlanta they had no music program so we played a lot of fraternity parties and I ended up playing a lot of restaurants and cocktail bars and things and kind of worked my way through college and saved money and my first wife and I, and she died like seven years ago, and uh, when we got married, I was 21, she was 19. And uh, we sat down and agreed that we we're going to save $50,000. And I was going to school, I was working in the afternoon, and I was playing at night, and she was working. And we lived on a budget of $10 a week. And when we saved $50,000, we were going to go into business. Now, I never thought about the music business, because I was playing on weekends and things, but I never thought about the retail. But I had been working in a discount house, like service merchandise and all the big discounters when I was in college also. So I decided to uh, save $50,000 in five years. So I opened up my first store in 1961. And we had 50000 which gave me a $100,000 line of credit. The bank, 61, that was a lot of money. So um, we opened up and uh, still worked on the budget and I played weekends. She kept her job for five years. We put every dime back into the business and we were very fortunate and the business kind of took off from the first day we opened and moved to our second location about two years later across the street in Buckhead, North Atlanta business area. And then we bought a big building down at the end of the block in 1967. It used to be a J.C. Penney uh, store and then it was the Bell South North Atlanta office and remodeled that building and bought the one next door and opened up our first kind of superstore and we called it Rhythm City, R-H-Y-T-H-M City. And uh, we were just very fortunate, you know, and got all the lines and I paid cash as I went and everybody said, oh, we can give you credit and I was one of the first ones to get the Gibson franchise in 1961, 62. And uh, they hadn't opened up Gibson franchise in years in Atlanta. There was a company called Ritter Music down on Albert Avenue downtown. They had it since like 1898, and they could, you couldn't break that franchise. And Gibson at that time used to just have one uh, franchise in a city, you know. I was able to get the franchise and um, paid the bills on the invoice date, and I kind of got in that happy in that habit. And uh, because of that, I was able to, over the years, obtain but, you know more lines like Fender and all the big stuff and moved down to the bigger store and carried that with me and as my volume grew and I did a lot of advertising and kept pouring the money back into the business it all worked out great for me and then I was very fortunate because the Beatles came on the scene Peter Paul and Mary and the folk music came on the scene uh, 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 Elvis Presley came on the scene rock and roll you know everything just happened and you could not get enough merchandise to sell. It didn't matter how much you were doing, because I was always like, give me one of those, give me two of those, three of those. And they'd say, man, you ought to buy six of them. One of the biggest influences on me was working in the discount house. Like the service merchandise one in Atlanta called the Tuxedo Mart, M-A-R-T. And uh, they had a code, I'm going to reveal it to you. It was T-U-X-E-D-O-M-A-R-T because there was two T's in Tuxedo March. So we had the code for our cost code on every product and we discounted 30, 40%, you know, razors and luggage and watches and rings and cameras and, you know, furniture, just all that stuff. And I really liked that discount business. And I said, when I open up, you just throw on a discount because nobody discounted. So I'll probably open up one of the first discount stores in the country.